Tom Hine is a certified financial planner and author of the Balanced Wealth Approach, Secrets to Living Long and Living Rich. He has over three decades of experience in the industry and is the founder and CEO of Capital Wealth Management in Glastonbury, Connecticut. However, what makes Tom unique is his holistic approach to financial planning. He believes that true success is not just about building wealth, but also about maintaining good health so that you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Drawing from his background as a financial planner and fourth degree black belt in Shotokan Karate, Tom aims to incorporate health and wellness into his financial strategies. Tom hopes to help his clients work towards their financial goals while inspiring them to lead healthier and more fulfilling lives. Please welcome my guest, Tom Hine. Welcome everybody to Money 911, where we talk about health, wealth, and peace of mind. And you heard that amazing intro. I'm so excited to talk about health and wealth, how synergistic and how it all fits together. And Tom, I'm really happy to have you here because you think a lot like I do with the, the health is wealth. And I literally just the other day, I had food poisoning, right? And I'm really in good health. I wow. probably would have had a harder time, right? I went through it, but what I, it always reminded, reminds me, right? If you don't have your health, what good is your wealth? And so there's, you know, we got to build it together. And, and I think that's why you wrote the balance wealth approach, right? That's kind of was your lead in in your book. Yes. Thank you, Chris. And uh, you're right. I think too often, as I've seen in my career in wealth management, too many people get to the point where they finally gotten the right amount of money. Either they earned it, you know, sold a company, inherited it, whatever, but then they have to go and use that money to buy back their health, you know, doctor visits and appointments. And I'm not saying that, you know, that they shouldn't do it, but it's a shame when they did it in the reverse order. And I wanted all your listeners to know while people are busy working hard and building their wealth, I want them to be mindful of their health, you know, become CEO of their own health so they don't have something sneak up on them that causes their life to take the wrong turn because they ignored those. And as a wealth advisor, I've had too many clients retire with tons of money and then one spouse passes on from neglect of a condition and then the other spouse has no one to enjoy it with, which really is sad, you know, it breaks my heart. It's so sad and, and they don't plan for it because it, you know, when you're 20, it's hard to imagine what it's like when you're 40 and when you're 40, what's it like when you're 80 and and yeah. no one thinks like my family was the nightmare. My, my, you know, dad was like, I'll never go to a nursing home. And my mommy got cancer and mm. five days of chemo was $90,000. Oh my gosh. Had chemo five days every month. Do the math, right? So a million dollars yep. is not a lot of money if you think you're gonna self-insure. And thank God my daddy was, you know, successful. He went to Caltech. Einstein, you know, was one of his teachers. Yeah. And, you know, he he said to me, Tom, he goes, You're gonna inherit a million dollars. And I never counted on the money. I said, Daddy, I just want you. And a few years later I said, Honey, you might get something. And that's the cost of not planning. And, yes. and that generation was just like, had like idolized their doctor in it, you know, and that mm -hmm. system of things. And they never took the time out of, you know, learning about the alternative and getting prepared before something happens. That's the new mindset, right? What you say? Right. There's two things. One, there's the, financial planning and documents, right? The part that is very important saying, I always say, especially while clients are healthy, you know, you go over the wills and the trust, and the durable power of attorney, that's important, but that's only one piece of it. Right. The documents flow well, but what about what I call the, the health and wellness part of it? And the reason why we mention this to our clients is that think about this, 
most people spend more time planning a two week vacation than they do planning their own health and wellness journey. Right. And it shouldn't be that way because you want to have many two week vacations, right? You want to have them out as far as you can go, but a plan for your health and wellness isn't just an annual trip to the doctor um, or not an annual trip, you know, or every six months just to the chiropractor or to a massage therapist, they help, but we want people to be more mindful, especially with all the technology and the scanning machines. I was on a Zoom call earlier today for a conference that's coming up in Boston with people from MIT and Harvard and some amazing technologies we're going to hear about are not in the future, Chris. They're here today, like right now. And so we get to get exposed to them. And I want people to be aware that that will probably bubble down quicker from the, you know, the athletes and the superstars will bubble down quicker to the public because it has so much appeal to help people. And the other thing that one doctor shared with me, he said, Tom, the human body is brilliant at hiding disease. I never thought he said, so a lot of us go along for years thinking we're fine because we feel okay. And it's not to say that we don't, but inside our bodies with all the technology they have, right? The ability to do advanced blood tests, there's things that our bodies are trying to tell us now that may not be a problem for 20 years. But Chris, and I'm sure you know, I just want people to be mindful that there are now technologies and things they should at least investigate. You know, they can take their own choice, run it by the medical people in their life. But as a wealth advisor, I would not want to see anybody fritter away a, a life that could have spent 20 more years of adding value because of neglecting a test. Or, you know, it, like you said with your father, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go to a nursing home. Well, the point is today, there's so many things that, that we have to battle to stay healthier longer, but the doctors know, these top end doctors know what's out there now and they know how to screen for it. So it's exciting in that regard. Yeah, and to get the information out on those new screenings and the new things that, I mean, I remember my dad even said, you know, in 20 years, cancer will be gone. And, and I really believe that there are cures that just aren't really mainstream. And I've, you know, I did a lot of searching myself and some challenges that I had. So it's so important because most entrepreneurs and CEOs, everybody just burns themselves to the ground to, you know, make the dollar and, and, you know, working long hours, not getting sleep. Yeah. You, you know, your balanced wealth approach, it, it emphasizes longevity and prosperity, but you, you know, you have a cool thing where you have, you know, you're, you're a black belt of the, how do you call it? Shotokan? Shotokan karate. Yep. Okay. Okay. And you know, that's a discipline and, and a focus and you've been doing that for a while, right? And yep. how, how you've woven that into what you talk to people about, right? It's, it's special. In fact, just an uh, a interesting story about California connection there. My first martial arts instructor, so not not Shotokan, where I picked it up at University of Connecticut, you know, where I started. But my first instructor back in Massachusetts, one of his last professional matches was fighting against Chuck Norris and his team in the 1970s. So that's how long some of my instructors have been teaching. And yet the whole virtue of it is by training the body, whether it's Pilates, yoga, Tai Chi, right, you name it, by that constant refreshing of the body and trying these things, you are maintaining a healthy profile along the way. You're doing the right things for yourself because without it, um, as you said, between sleep, the reason why you might recognize I wrote about the aura ring, O-U-R-A, it's very well known today. A lot of people don't know it can track a lot of your sleep metrics and it's very inexpensive to buy. I don't have any financial ties with the company, but this is something you can run right on your cell phone and you can actually get all the right metrics to see what your heart rate variability is, for example, or the quality of your sleep or how much exercise you got that day. This is all readily available today. Right. And and what people need to is to start to integrate. I think what happened for me with the pandemic, it it forced me into more workout, right? Start yeah. my day and end yeah. my day. And, and I remember a long time too, my partner would always tell me, you know, take time out, you know, after you work, just sit down and be still, didn't have to do any, you know, ohm or special meditation, but just, you know, let go, let God, just relax, right? And just breathe. 
and just mm -hmm. get away from the screen for a few minutes, right? Yeah. So what kind of tips do you have that you like to share with people? Yeah, so a few of them. Number one, we happen to have a scorecard, you know, in the book and online. But the tips are, there's a few basic ones. Um, and the paramount one is sleep. Um, there's a famous author in your neck of the woods, Matthew Walker, who wrote a great book on why we sleep. It's a brilliant, it's the, what I call the Bible, right, of why we sleep. But so sleep, big one, right? A lot of people think they can function with less than seven hours. And according to him, the expert in sleep, he said, statistically, he does not find people can function long term on less than seven hours consistently. Otherwise, it'll affect everything else in your body. And then we know diet, right? Really important what we what we take in. Yeah. Uh, we know that for some people, fasting is something they should look at. Yeah. Another hint for uh, for your people listen to, I tried this for a two week period. This would be amazing if people have the chance. And I, I did it under the arm at one point. It's that uh, Freestyle Libre. It's a 14 day continuous glucose monitor. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I have any diabetes, but it monitors for 14 days, you know, with your cell phone, every meal you eat, you can see what your blood sugar does. Well, my gosh, did you know some people, um, they, if they eat a banana, it will spike their blood sugar. My, fortunately, I am, I don't get spiked by that. Yeah. So bananas are actually okay for me, whereas other people, until you try it on your glucose monitor, they wouldn't know that, right? And right. now we're seeing the sciences. Once people know, and did you know the order of the food that you eat, Chris, matters? Yeah. The order in which you eat it, right? So a lot of yeah. your, uh, a lot of the listeners might not know that it does matter for people and they have to check it out, whether it's, right. you know, proteins first or the plant-based diet. So number yeah. one, sleep is high priority. Number two, the diet and really monitor sugar. Right now, the big enemy is clear that people are saying sugar, but you'd be surprised how it sneaks into everything. It's in everything, yeah. So you really have to work hard, right? By processed foods, right. Processed foods. And, and even though we go for our morning coffee, we think, oh, I want a splash of almond milk or whatever. Got Guess what in gets it. in there, right? I, I got forced into having to pay attention because I started getting headaches in my late 40s and I was... Well, you know, that's when we talked a little bit earlier. I went to the doctor yep. and he gave me three prescriptions, said, whatever one of these works, then we'll know what's wrong with you. And that did not make me feel good. And right. I went to the few major surgeons and they said I had pituitary tumor, a benign pituitary tumor. And that's the kind of what makes your growth hormone go crazy. And then it makes different organs get really big. Tony wow. Robbins has it. Right. That's why he's so gigantic. If you yep. ever seen him stand on stage by somebody, his growth hormone went crazy. It probably did in his brain too, right? Right, so, right. But but I did not want drugs in surgery. I did not want them to go up my nose and cut this thing off and be incapacitated and on drugs the rest of my life. So I literally prayed, God, what do I, what do, I do, right? Prayers, yep. fasting, cleanses. Yep. And I literally did cleanses and prayers and a number of years, thank God, beat it it's gone I'm, and i've been uh, you know vegan you know i was vegetarian in my single digits so i've been and i did it for like no killing non-violence and then yeah, later, yeah. Lied, later on in life i found out that it, it really helped me get past something that they would tell me there's no way you're going to cure that and wow so i'm like a miracle i've never really gone on and promoted it or you know i'm not trying to be a i'm not you know, an, you know, talking so much about the health. I mean, I could have a whole department on that because of what. Well, I'm you're, you're a modern day Louise Hay is what you are, right? Well, thank you. That's that's kind of you to say, because I want to incorporate it all because it, I think it's all part of it. I mean, it isn't money and it isn't just health you right. know, and spirit and and right. and like, you know, connecting with your spirit inside. And so it's all part of that and and i think right now there's a group of us being brought together i have a i have a mastermind called conscious giving council where yep. we'll really be able to help change the world and, and you know that's really what i'm excited about and that's why i have you on the show because you really you know you're in the you're in the same conversation too correct and we want we want people to live 
longer, healthier lives. So I'll give you an example that some of the studies done, and this was actually out of some of the other books written by these, what I call the, uh, you know, the giants of uh, longevity, right. that if everyone lived one year longer on earth, it's something like $36 trillion added to the economy. <laughs> everyone living one year longer. Why? Because as we all know, uh, as we age, if we're fortunate to make a series of good decisions in our lives, as we age, we actually have better wisdom, right? Better decisions now than maybe 20 years ago. I know that's true of me. But what I want people to know is if you can extend your life and stay healthier, that means you've got that many more years of peak earning potential or your impact to the world. And oftentimes, people spend so much time creating that that persona and doing a great job, travel and all. But what happens is if you're not mindful, you actually wear down the very body that's giving you the chance to share that, right? We don't want that. We want our community of people to live longer and also spot things earlier. And again, many of these doctors know about these tests. I've had them run them on me. You know, you can have your genome sequence for a couple hundred dollars, and then they find out things that you didn't even know about yourself that can be very instrumental. And now I'm passing it on to my children. I've got two adult children. I want to share with them the wisdom that I'm learning so they can pick this up at an early age. And that's part of that sort of passing it on to the next generation that's so important. It is so important. And and that's that's a pivotal part. Like when people have successful businesses in there, that's when they can look at, you know, you've could only drink what cu- cup of tea at a time. And now yep. you can take what your blessings are like you're doing. And how can I help more people with it? Is it just about money or just about health? And specifically, a lot of people, I don't know why it doesn't matter. But a lot of people ask me about sleep. Okay, let's just take sleep. Yeah. And I don't know if it's in California, but a lot of people say they're they cannot get seven hours straight. That, and I don't know if it's frequencies or what's going on, but people are waking up every few hours and they're not getting the REM sleep. Yeah. And they're having problems with their mind and negative thoughts and all of that. But, you know, what do you suggest for people? So, again, I, I always do counsel people. Yeah, I counsel. I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor. I tell my right. clients, right, I, I play one on TV. <laughs> but in all seriousness, what I would suggest to them is, the research, and I mentioned this book, is pretty clear, like check your caffeine intake after 2.30, right? I found out when my genome was sequenced, my liver, I don't break down caffeine the way some people you know, can have a cappuccino at 7 o'clock at night and fall abed at 9. I cannot, right? No. Me so neither. make sure you check your caffeine intake. And then you might have heard the 3 two, one concept. Again, this is things I've learned you know, from interacting with people at uh, all these conferences. So it's ideally no meal three hours before bed, right? no alcohol two hours before bed, and no screen time one hour before bed, right? That's the three, two, one, okay? Now, if you go further than that, I, my, I've tried it. I actually have to wait four hours for me. So if I'm going to try to hit 10 o'clock, my meal wants to finish by about six for me. Now, I know I joke it's like being a Jerry Seinfeld episode, right, about the early birds. But the truth is when you – practice fasting at all, you can have your latest meal at 4 or 5 p.m. and really get through the night and not eat to the next morning. But we weren't raised that way. So you raised a great thing about sleep. The second thing I would tell you that's really important is, and you already know this, but about the blue light, right? The hygiene, the environment you want to be in. And I just learned this. I'm going to grab, I'm going to show you this. I learned this from um, one of the people, uh, Do I have it here? Um, I was going to hold up my cell phone, but I don't know if you know this, but EMF, right? The uh, the EMF that's given off. Do you have one of those filters? Do you have an EMF? I I have. I have. I'm a fanatic on it because I'm really sensitive to the blue light. I have the blue light glasses. I have the blue light block on the screen. I have the EMF. I have shungite on. Shungite is, is a stone. It's a meteor. That, yep. that actually changes the signal of the EMF. 
it does everything except G5. Don't get G5. Uh, right. Know. Now, that's great. But so that well, Shundite yes. will affect that. So, yeah, I'm a pretty much fanatic on that. I've got a, I've got a actually got a Shungite sticker on my cell phone, too. Now, the other thing I was told, uh, this is by Dr. Guillermo Navarte in, in Miami. But the other thing I was told is moving, you know, the router is far away yep, from your bedroom. And no, and you there's certain EMF filters you place against your router. Oh, well, you ought to you ought to share that with yeah, us. Yeah, I'll share that with you. So what I was mm -hmm. learning was it wasn't just the hygiene, if you will, the sleep hygiene in the bedroom. That's important. Yeah. But really watching all anything in the house related to setting off what they call non-native EMF. So these are yeah. things that I'm picking up. And they've actually done studies on people's heart rate variability with and without EMF filters. And so that's fascinating. But bottom it line, is. it has to be of paramount. Um, sleep has to be number one, but check about the meals, right. right? The caffeine. The other part about meditation that works for some people is, is calming that brain. I don't know if you ever heard of also box breathing, the box yeah, breathing, but go right? Go ahead and share that with. Yeah. So this again was know. shared with me. So the box breathing of think of a box, right? It's four squares right. or part of a square. So you've got, it, it's a way for your brain to go. I'm going to, you know, inhale for four seconds, right? hold it for four seconds, right. exhale. What I've That's done, right. and I've done that before, when I, if I've woken up in the middle of what I call middle of a REM cycle, uh -huh. I'll make sure I'm hydrated, but I have actually had box breathing help me get back to a normal cycle. There you go. So, and it depends if you're traveling too, like if I'm on the East Coast and I'm in California with a time zone difference. Right. But I have definitely found box breathing important. The other thing, don't forget that I think a lot of people minimize but and this is a, a subject for another day and i can certainly bring on well-known nutritionists but it's also what we eat right what's compatible with our body so some people don't realize that some of the foods they think are good for them may be good for somebody else but genetically not good for them but they wouldn't know it you know until you get tested with that so besides the sleep and besides the diet we also want to make sure you're taking time from mindfulness and meditation, because after all, while well, everyone talks about it, the amount of people that can sit for 45 minutes with their own thoughts, it took me years. I'm now on 10 years of doing it. And you know who I like to say informally my teacher was, I ne I've never met him personally, was John Kabat-Zinn. Hmm. So John Kabat-Zinn, you know, years ago came out with audio tapes on it, and then you went online. And I studied what he did, and I think my martial arts background helped me. And I really got with the whole MBSR, I realized I was able to learn that technique on my own. And boy, did that change a lot. And yet a lot of people know these things, but won't put them into action, which is what we talked about earlier. You've what got to take the, the step. NB, what was the NSBR? Um, it's uh, the Mind Body Stress Reduction, MBSR. Maybe and it's been a program. A of, can you share a little bit about that? Sure. That is a program that um, was started by... Mr. Kabat-Zinn from University of Massachusetts in the 1970s and 1980s. And he was teaching people stress reduction techniques through meditation and mindfulness. And it's become its own universe that he taught people. And what I like about it is it, it doesn't require you. This is important. He always emphasizes people think they have to go and travel, you know, 2000 miles and go to Tibet and sit in the right. mountains. He's like, no, you can do this in your own living room, dining room, but but quieting the mind is an exercise that's not easy. And I, I used to start off and I couldn't do it for two minutes, you know, years ago. I thought, oh my gosh, then all of a sudden I built up to five minutes, right? But just like martial arts, Chris, you can't get to be a black belt right away. It takes you years and years of doing the same techniques. But one day you realize, oh my gosh, for 45 minutes, I've been sitting in stillness. And yeah. of course, I don't have to explain it to many of your listeners. Once you cross that threshold, it's a gift that you never want to take away from yourself Absolutely. If, you, if you have the time to do it. Absolutely. It's it's a reset for me when I do it. And and it doesn't take long where, you know, what I do and I and I just simply just let go, let God and relax yes. and I do the deep breathing. And and I you know, all the noise goes away and then I almost get my assignment for the next day, right? Okay, this, I'm going to do that, that, that. And and there's so much peace there. Maybe maybe you could share a little bit 
I know there's a lot to it, what you do, but yeah. you could share like a few tips. How does, how does someone that's just listening get a little mindful and get a little peace? Yeah. I mean, the first life? thing obviously is our environment. Right. And yeah. I, I say I'm, I'm just as guilty. And I think martial arts saved me from this years ago, but most of us aren't used to having literally, and especially busy parents. We know that busy parents as well, but five minutes a day, just think five minutes <laughs> where I'm not answering uh, I'm not answering a phone call. I've got no meeting to be to. If you just take a five minute block and say, I'm going to sit and yeah. breathe, you don't even have to quote meditate, just sit and breathe for five exactly. minutes, ideally close your eyes. Yeah. You'd be surprised how in the beginning that might seem, but after like a week or two of just the five minutes, you go, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I know I'm thinking differently about my world because I have that five minutes a day, right? But you yeah. got to start somewhere. The other thing I've learned a lot for me is there's a happens to be a sauna in the gym that's next door to where I work out. And a sauna has been hugely helpful for me over the years. Um, and then in fact, we talked about the Tony Robbins book. One of the studies in there said that 20 minutes of sauna three times a week at 165 degrees itself is therapeutic. And I think it was Rhonda Patrick that had that study, but imagine that he said yeah. it wasn't even working out just, three times a week in a sauna, yes. obviously you have to hydrate. You have to be careful if you're on blood pressure medicine, right. but I've done that for years. And boy, I, when I miss it, when they had to close down the sauna for repairs for like a month, all of us were going crazy that love the sauna because yeah. we realized how important it was for our regimen. Right. <laughs> well, exactly. And, and it's like a, it's like a speeded up cleanse. You could say, right. When you do a sauna, it yeah. does. And there's a thing called that doctors know better than I do, but it's called heat shock protein release. If you look it up mm -hmm. and just the same thing with people that do cold plunges, your body actually releases, you know, inside there's certain proteins right. that get triggered with that to this. And I think it's because obviously thousands of years ago, right, we were running from that saber tooth tiger or whatever we had to do to survive. But now the body knows to release it. But that's right. a health benefit. And again, this doesn't require a copay doesn't right. require a doctor visit, right? right. I mean, you don't yeah. even, frankly, you don't even want your phone in the sauna with you. It's probably no. too hot for the phone anyway, but you can just sit there. Leave your phone behind, yeah. In silence, <laughs> right? right? Um, and yeah. so these are some of the things I want people to try to be aware of because it doesn't take a lot to move that boulder. You know, you may not roll right. the boulder uphill, but just to move it a bit takes a few conscious steps and every day, if you build a couple of these habits, and we do that when we check in with our clients for their portfolio reviews, we just go, hey, you can self-score yourself on sleep, diet, exercise, and stress reduction, because then we want to guide them. And, oh, if you have this concern, we can right. you know, talk to this doctor who's a specialist in that area. Yeah. That's what they know best. Or ask your primary care, like vitamin D. Mm -hmm. I would challenge people listening today, how many people actually know their vitamin D level and have it checked every four to six months? I think that's something that science has proven can be helpful. Right. And it's a lot higher than what people think it's supposed to be. I mean, the number that it should be at is yes. really supposed to be higher than the number they're telling you it should be at. And right. It, and right. Yes. And, and they it, wouldn't know, like, you know, during COVID, People right. didn't know doctors were checking for it in the emergency rooms, but we, you know, people didn't know. And right. I will say, I do credit my folks at um, Fountain Life that keep me healthy. I can say I did get the vaccine, but I never got COVID. Now, all of my friends from high school that are my age around the country all got COVID and survived. All my family members got COVID and survived and all my employees got it and survived. But I credit my health regimen for not ever having gotten it, even though I do think, you know, some of it might have been luck, but I worked really hard on the sleep, the vitamin D and all those things all right. through COVID. And uh, I feel fortunate so far, I've been able to escape, you know, escape getting it. Yeah, me too. And, and I know it's from the health and, you know, I avoid a lot of, I avoid all pharmaceuticals if possible myself and, and everybody's got to go by you know, and be open to learn and take time out to learn. Yes. And there's, and there's remedies that maybe you don't have a sauna, but hey, you can actually do an Epsom salts uh, for your feet and have right. a release there and put a little bit night on feet afterwards and draw out. That's what I did when I just had food poisoning. And bam, 
it was like, whoa, that's better, you know? Right. But so, see, yeah, you're a practitioner. And that's the thing is, you know, you all have to be guided by somebody, right? We want to be guided by somebody. And we want people to seek out the medical professionals, the people in their lives that really know this stuff and they do the research on it. Right. And more importantly, it doesn't take, again, you know, years ago, people might think, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. But it doesn't take a lot it's of not. effort to stay five minutes a day right. or to look into the aura ring or anything that gets you one step on this right. journey of health and wellness. Exactly. And you want to start now, just like with planning, you want to start, you know, when you're younger than you think. Yeah. I, I think you have a really unique, I mean, you're a fourth degree black belt. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Shotokan, right? Am I saying it right? Yeah. Shotokan fourth, karate. Fourth degree. It isn't first degree. That means you've, you know, that takes progressed a lot, up. Right. You've, and, and so what kind of lessons have, that have influenced you from that, that you can articulate into what? Yeah. We're so about? thank you for asking. It's the love of my life. And I write yeah. about how I literally quit corporate America years ago because my bosses gave me a choice. You either come to work later at night and skip karate or find a new career. And that's what got me into wealth <laughs> management. So I thank them for that. But there's a, a few things, right? Number one, karate is always about peace of mind and self-defense. It's not an offensive thing. It's about peace of mind and being kind to your fellow man. It really is if you study the true nature. Um, and judo is often called the gentle way. A lot of people don't know they call judo the gentle way. Mm -hmm. The second thing of karate is <clears throat> we all know you have to practice it, right, every day. I mean, you can do a few punches, but by the time we grade for black belt, we probably have done 10,000 punches. So you need to practice every day just as you would your breathing, your meditation, or, or your aura ring. You need to practice it. But the third thing to realize is that Ultimately, it's a gift to yourself. When you spend time, I always say, and I know Louise Hay and other people said this, when you spend time with your own thoughts, you know, whether it's Pilates yoga, Pilates yoga, whatever meditation, you're actually, it's an act of self-love. You're actually saying, I believe in myself. It's important enough. And a lot of people are so giving in this country that they give, 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 but they've got nothing left for themselves. Right. And I want those people who are doing such a great job to really be mindful about it's OK to be selfish, be selfish for your health and wellness, because the, you need to be the strongest person you can be before you help everybody else. Exactly. So those are some of the things that martial arts has taught me, because for years it was very tough to train when people wanted you at work and you're like, no, I need to do this for me so I can be a better employee, a better boss, a better coworker. And boy, did it pay off in spades. That's really wonderful. And and I like, I just really like how you've woven this into everything you're doing. So the balance wealth approach. Tell everybody how to get your book and how to, you know, contact you. Yeah, thank you. So it's on Amazon. And I actually have an audible. I recorded the audio book in my oh, own okay. voice. So it's cool. the balance wealth approach, secrets to living long living rich or you go right to the website and it's literally the title of the book the balance wealth approach.com and you'll see a scorecard there and some other of my appearances but i really want people to develop their own you know become ceo of their own health and like you chris i'm building this community of people who want to make this a priority they don't necessarily have to have a big pocketbook but they want to make health and wellness part of their financial planning journey or they want to learn more about it because in the end, as I said, the science is there now. People know what's out there that's good for us. And we really have to embrace that, find the right experts, and really not be afraid to take that first step because the payoff to you and your family members and generations of your family, hopefully, is tremendous. That's right, Tom. Boy, you brought out some good points. We're going to just have to do this again because we could just keep going here for sure. And I would love to do that. Thank you, Chris. Yes, health is wealth. And, you know, take take time. Take a Sunday off and, and dive deep into the book. And and there's so many different strategies out there. But this this actually is how you protect your assets, right? You're right. You want to you want to protect your assets and pass on a family legacy because it's not just the money. It's yes. the health and wellness you want to pass on to your kids and grandkids. Yes, you're your most valuable asset, right? You are indeed. <laughs> 
Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.